Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey. In this how-to feature, I'd like to take a look at wiring diagrams and power flow schematics. One of the problems we have when diagnosing components and circuits is a joint problem of both accessibility and detailed information. By detailed information, I mean the wiring schematics. Once you've introduced and finished with the first look option, which is serial communication, you'll be left with, we assume, a DTC or perhaps a value which does not correlate correctly with good known data. We then have to challenge the component functionality and the circuit. There's a certain order in which we do this. It's a pretty well-defined order. It's part of our foundation training program and runs through all of the other specialist training programs which we provide. And it goes something like this. Output, trigger, power, ground, current, environment, and software. I'll go through those, perhaps like a bit more detail. If the output of a component function is incorrect, does it require a trigger or a command or an input for that function to exist? For example, ignition or injection will require a crank angle sensor or a camshaft position sensor. So we've got output, trigger, power on ground. All components require a power on ground supply. If it's a sensor, then we assume that the current requirement is minimal and we will look then at both voltage and the ground reference. If the component is an actuator or requires current as part of its functionality, then we will measure current with a priority over power and ground. Therefore, we have output trigger, power ground, current. The advantage of measuring current in a component is that it can be measured anywhere in the circuit. Inductively, I'm going to demonstrate this because I've chosen an injector circuit for this particular demonstration. We will measure current as a priority over voltage and ground. Why? Because you can measure it anywhere in the circuit, non-intrusively. If the current path is correct, then obviously power and ground must be correct. If current is incorrect, we then must get the wire schematics out and check both power and ground is present and also continuity. I'm going to demonstrate that also. I mentioned environment. If the component operates in a hostile environment, it could be that the environment is the issue and finally, of course, the possibility exists that there could be a software update issue as well. So there's a number of options which we go through. This demonstration is about using the wiring schematics. And in particular, what we're going to take a look at here, courtesy of Autodata, is this particular BMW 318 Compact. It's an E46 Compact. And we've exposed the ECU. Um, so that we can actually get to the back of the pins. Most of our diagnostics now are involved at the ECU because of the way vehicles are being built. The wiring now is, um, I'm going to use the word, almost impossible to access without going back to the ECU. A lot of the accessibility now is quite challenging. These diagrams are drawn in a, in a very methodical manner. I'm going to go to the electronic version shortly, just demonstrating the fact that you can print them on paper and use them as a worksheet. I'd like to begin by looking at the component list. We're obviously going to identify the component, in our case, injectors, component Y3. Once we've established what the component ID reference is, we can then relate that document with wiring colour schematics. Obviously, when you're working with a connector at the back of a PCM, there are many, many terminals, and wire colour often is a very, very useful way of initially um, identifying a particular circuit. Interestingly, you will notice that on these diagrams, this particular ECU uses, I think it's five edge connectors, A, B, C, D, E. These are all identified on the drawing with the relevant pin number. So we have a number of options of identifying the actual um, location of that particular connector, either by wire colour or pin location. Having identified the injectors, the next task is to understand the actual schematics of the wiring, where the power comes from, where the ground path is, etc. So, having looked at this, let's go and refer back now to the electronic system, which we can actually uh, expand upon and get a clearer image. First thing I've done is identify the vehicle year, which is a 51 plate car. 
it's a BMW, it's a 3 Series E46 and it's a 318 Compact, TI Compact and what I want to look at are the wiring schematics and there we have the electronic version of the paper diagram we've just been referring to. One of the big uh, advantages of, of using this system is this zoom feature. We are looking at the injectors and you can see that that's the part of the schematics we're dealing with. And in particular, I want to understand where the power supply and grounds come from. It's an inductor, it is a coil, it requires a power supply and a ground path and therefore uses current to operate. So when we actually come to do a simple measurement, which I'll demonstrate, we'll be looking at continuity and current flow through this circuit, just one particular injector. First of all, let's try and understand where the power comes from. Most injectors, not all, most injectors switch ground as on. This system certainly does. There are exceptions now on some later variants of engine management control, not this particular one. So I'm looking for a power supply starting at the top with a ground reference at the bottom. Here are the, the four injectors. If we follow, they can see that there's a common power supply on all of those components. Now, where wiring schematics helps you in the diagnostic process or logic path is that if we had a DTC that related to a, a group of components perhaps that shared a common power supply, my suspicion would be drawn more towards the power supply than the actual components. So you can see some certain logic in, in how we interpret certain types of fault data. Having established that it's a common supply, I want to find out where it comes from. So I'm going to follow it along. It drops down. It flows along. You can see also that it powers that relay. So a failure in this circuit would also affect the functionality of that control device. It then goes up to a control fuse, so clearly that fuse F3, which is a 20 amp fuse, would also be an issue in this logic path. It then provides power to all those other fuses, so if this particular power supply went down, there would be an in, a, a, a considerable number of, of, of failed events and we can follow it through to this control relay, which looks like a K40, let's move my arrow, K46 control relay, and we can see that it comes in. So it's power switch, pin 30 is, is nominal battery power supply, pin 87 is the output stage from the relay. The relay is controlled by the ECU from pin 23. So I now understand that it's the PCM which latches that relay, which in turn connects pin 30, the battery, to 87, the output, to those circuits and eventually feeding through to the injectors. Therefore the ground path is then controlled individually. Each injector is controlled individually directly to the ECU Block C, pins 6, 7, 13 and 25. So I now understand that part of the circuit. Once the circuit is on, once ground is switched, current will throw through, flow through the device to ground. So if we have a poor current path, does that mean a bad ECU? Absolutely not, not yet. We'd then need to look at where the main ground connections are from the ECU, and they are here. So let's take a quick look at that part of the diagram, this part here. And we can see that on block A, A and block E, pins 4 and 6 on block A and pins 5 on block E, all brown connectors, brown cable go to the main ground point. Therefore, if we had poor current through the injectors, it would be absolutely essential, remember the rule, output trigger, power ground, current. If the current is bad, power and ground. I check the power supply and I check the ground reference. If the power supply is good, the ground reference is good, 
but the current flow is then poor, that is then a PCM fault. It's a pure logic thought process, no guesswork. Because we can measure current anywhere, either at the component, at the ECU, even in the ground path, it gives us a better point of opportunity. I've made some connections already. I would need to run the car for this. We'll, we'll take a short break in a moment. I need to run the car to do the next part of this demonstration. I've already identified, in my case, I've chosen pin six and seven, which happens to be a, a particular injector. But if I move back to the injectors, um, we're looking at pin six and seven. Um, I'm looking at that particular circuit. I can measure current through that circuit. When we can measure current anywhere in the circuit, power or ground, non-intrusively using a, a Hall effect uh, current clamp. I can also look at continuity with voltage. Basically, we'll have a power supply going in and out and will only be switched to ground when the vehicle is either cranked or is, is in normal operating conditions, in other words, the vehicle is running. So we'll be able to look at an event an event is a triggered device, it's an injector, it's triggered or controlled in combination with the crank and cam sensors. So we have all the information required, the accessibility that's required, and the all important information, the schematics, so that I can now thoroughly, professionally, and very quickly work through this vehicle wiring uh, system with the minimal amount of disturbance. In other words, I want to know where I'm going, why I'm going there, before we actually then have to start taking things apart. Point of interest, probably seen these before, the ability to probe without damage on the back of a pin is very important. Uh, we produce and purchase all our own parts for these extremely sharp, strong probes that allow us to probe into the back of the pin with minimal intrusion and no damage whatsoever to the back of the pin so that we're measuring both voltage and current on this particular example. I've chosen my ground reference for this telescope We're using a Pico scope. I've chosen my ground reference uh, point right here. I've chosen the ground reference at the CU. Um, so we've got all the features. We've got both voltage, ground and current measurement that we're now going to take. So short break. Uh, I'm going to run the vehicle, get Pico up and running, and I'd like to show you then the results of that test based on the schematics that we've been discussing. Welcome back. As you can see, the vehicle now is running. Clearly, the vehicle has no faults. This is for means of demonstration of, of correct interpretation and application of technique using power schematics. The image that you're looking at is a combined image of both voltage and current. We're going to take a look at a particular injector. What we're looking at here is the voltage path in blue. And you can see that we have a voltage supply, nominal battery voltage around 14.7, with an event. The event is the switching to ground of that voltage, therefore the injector is being triggered. Um, and you can see that we're looking at several events. We, we really only need to look at maybe one or two events. So what I'm going to do first of all is just shorten the time base so we can see each event more clearly. So I'm going to choose a shorter time reference. And we need to capture the event. So I'm going to use a trigger to stabilize it. So now we have a single event. The power supply comes in to the injector. If you remember, I explained that power comes in from the top. The component is the injector. So power comes in from the top, is switched to ground by the PCM via an earth reference. If you recall, the main earth reference to the CU is here. So power comes in from the top through the component, through the ECU, to ground. When the device is on, an event will take place whereby current flow will exist. We are measuring current 
by a Hall Effect clamp. And if I scale the scope to an accurate range setting, these are roughly 15 ohm injectors. Well, 15 ohms into 14.7 is about one amp of current. You can see that when the event takes place, current flow increases, which is correct. We can look at the, the pattern, the profile of that current, and we can measure it very, very accurately. So if I just use the pointer initially, measure peak current, we have 105 millivolts. That's 1.05 amps. Absolutely spot on. So the conclusion from that simple test is that if the current through the component is correct, then the power supply, the component, the circuit, the functionality of the power transistor in the ECU and the ground references must all be correct. So that goes back to this simple process logic, output trigger, power ground, current. We have proven that with the aid of the measurement, the electronic measurement, and with the wire schematics. Absolutely essential. If we're going to accurately, professionally confirm a, a component or functionality error, we can't simply just change components. We have to check out the circuits and the environment they operate in. If you inadvertently replace a failed component because of a wiring fault, the chances are that that component will fail or indeed the repair, of course, will not be affected. To conclude this feature in the AutoInform magazine, just to recap on the process, output, power, ground, current, the key functions of, of the injector operation. With the aid of the wire schematics, the power schematics, we're able to identify the pins, select the right tools, in our case, we're using oscilloscope, measuring with priority current. I think it's critical that if we're going to examine circuits accurately, professionally, before re replacing components, we need to go through that process with the aid of the information, the all-important information. Without that, really, um, effective repairs would be, uh, I'm tempted to say, near impossible. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit the AutoInform website. For details, both of our face-to-face -face and DVD e-learning programme. Thank you for joining me in this feature, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.